Hello everybody, this is Tiziano and today we are getting to know the new Raspberry Pi B+. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing because I'm gonna be posting content about drones, robotics, programming, OpenCV, technical reviews right here. And today we're getting to know the new Raspberry Pi Model B+, thanks to the kit from ABOX. I got it from Amazon and I put a link in the description below. So let's just dive in. And of course we're gonna have Model B+, right here. Now in the box there is um, a power supply, it has an on-off switch, so it comes pretty handy for my RetroPie project. Then HDMI cable, um, a case, so this is a plastic clear case and this case is actually pretty useful because it's pretty thick. This can include the Pi plus a hat or a couple of heat sinks. This one looks pretty nice, it's all copper so it should do a pretty good job in dissipating heat. Not that you need too much because the new Pi has a new package for their processor and so they handle the heat much much better. And then still in the box we have an SD card. This is a preloaded with Raspbian and you also have an SD card adapter for your computer and of course you're gonna have the instruction here in the box for so if you're new to the Pi and you want to set it up here are all the instruction for you know get you started. But enough with the talking about this kit let's dive in to the Raspberry Pi B+. Now the first impression is that they have a much cleaner uh, layout. The first thing that pops out is the new package for the processor. Now this processor is still the old 2837 in a new package with its shield on top. And this new package handles heat much better so they could push the maximum speed from 1.2 to 1.4 gigahertz and I saw some benchmarks and some thermal pictures of this new Raspberry Pi and I saw that the heat is much better spread all around the board rather than concentrated on the processor so that's why I'm, I said before that you probably don't even need the heat sink if your project doesn't need a high computational load but still it's nice to have it. Another thing that really pops out immediately is the new dual band Wi-Fi. They put it under a shield so that everything here can be called a module and this should simplify the process of compliance testing plus there's no more the, the chip antenna and now they have the antenna on the PCB and according to the manufacturer this antenna works much better Third thing that pops out immediately is this chip over here. This chip handles the power supply and distributes the power nicely to every device in your board. Then there are other things that are in the new design, for example the gigabit ethernet. Now this is a gigabit ethernet hardware but it's not working on a gigabit ethernet line. Actually it works on a USB. So the gigabit, we don't have a gigabit connection, you are actually limited by the USB connection speed that is 300 megabit per second so the maximum speed that I saw in the benchmarks of this port is about 200, 220, even 250 megabit per second so it's still at least two to two and a half times faster than the previous model but not a real gigabit port. Another improvement that I see is the PoE. See this header over here? They're for getting power from a PoE cable so you plug your PoE cable and you get the power out of here and then you have to uh, go through your another hat or you do your adapter. So this is a nice setup if you want to keep all the package compact. Anything else is pretty much the same. You still have the HDMI output port for your monitor. So you plug this cable over here and you connect it to your TV or monitor. You have the audio jack, uh, USB for powering. So you can power it through the USB adapter and you have the four USB 2 ports. That's a bummer. I would have I enjoyed having a USB 3 on this board, but still, this is what we have. And still the same 40 pin header so that every hat that you already have is compatible with this model. And then you still have the CSI input for your camera and the DSI output for your display. So 
the question is, should you go to this board or stick with the previous model? Uh, it really depends on your project. If you're sensitive to power, then you should probably not need to go to this new board because the consumption on this board is pretty high. But if you need a little bit of more push in your computational power, this is the nice choice. Plus, as I told you, the dual band Wi-Fi comes pretty handy if you're working in an area full of 2.4 gigahertz disturbance. And this package that I got, if you, it's the first time that you put your hands on a Raspberry Pi or you need a Raspberry Pi for working as a desktop, uh, as a desktop computer, or you're using for, I don't know, a retro Pi, like I'm gonna do it. But if this is not your first Raspberry Pi and you need to put it somewhere else, then you probably just buy the, the board itself and access to the board through SSH. If you guys are gonna be using this board for your robotic project, I have a video for you for setting up a Raspberry Pi for a drone in general for any Ardu pilot project. I put a link in the description below. So guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I better get going with my retro pie game project because otherwise my son is going to be pretty mad at me. I thank ABOX for this awesome kit that you can find in the description below and I'll see you guys next time.